Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with the final video of the course where you've seen by the title of the video we solve the past paper. We solve the past paper and that would be it for this course right so this the paper that i have this is uh, the power system operation fall 2021 semester msc electrical power engineering past paper okay for udp shower all right okay so let us get going question number one now let me tell you from the beginning is that most of these questions are all of these questions are the questions that i have previously solved somewhere in the playlist you know through an example the data may be different they a little bit different or the question may exactly be the same but today let's say we're not going to that detail i will just show you the procedure and that would be it so the first question states that the accompanying table provides the usage of a load by a small engineering workshop so basically let me just uh, you know write down the time first this is operating from 9 to 4 9 a.m to 4 p.m so 9 to 10 10 to 11 uh, 11 to 12 12 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 and then 3 to 4 so you are given his usage for light bulbs fans lathe machine milling machine and an air compressor I'm not writing that I will just write the total load that he is using or let me just write from 9 to 10 he is using light bulbs equivalent of a 500 watts he is using fans of 200 watts he is using air compressor for a 7.46 kilowatt then from 10 to 11 he is using light bulbs for 500 watts similarly fans for 200 watts and a milling machine for 7.46 kilowatts Similarly, over here you have 500 watts for fan, 200 for, uh, for uh, 500 for light, 200 for fan. For a milling machine, you've got an 11.2 kilowatts. These are for air compressor, right? Yes. Similarly, then you have 500, then you have 200. These are for the lights and fans. Lathe machine also has 7.46 kilowatts, and air compressor also has 7.46 kilowatts. From 1 to 2, he uses 500 for lights and 300 watts for fans. Then he has from 2 to 3, 600 for fans, 300 for lights. Uh, no, 600 for lights, 300 for fans. And then from 3 to 4, 600 for, for, for lights, 300 for fans and 7.46 for the for the what uh, for the air compressor so this is the load shown the load that is he is using hourly from 9 a.m to 4 p.m this is the load uh, you know habit of his using it right so what you have is the question is to find the peak load and its duration the off peak load connected load daily energy consumed average load demand factor let us get going so first I will find out the in the individual hours the total load that he is using right. So you add these two up please. Add these all up. So what would this come out to be? Add this in kilowatts. So 0.5 plus 0.2 is 0.7 plus 7.46 is 8.16 is kilowatt is the load that he is using during 9 to 10. Similarly the same is over here 8.16 from 10 to 11. Then from 11 to 12 what do you have is 11.9 then you have from 12 to 1 this is 15.62 then this is 0.8 this is 0.9 no uh, and i have a mistake somewhere i have a mistake somewhere from 2 to 3 from 2 to 3 you have 600 300 7.46 and 11.2 300 7.46 and 11.2 so this comes out to be 19.56 and then the final the last one that is 600 and 300 and you also have a 7.46 so why am i making a mistake yes this is fine so then that comes out to be 8.36 this comes out to be 8.36 so this is the total connected load in the hourly duration in kilowatts range fine okay now what do you have? He's asking you for the off-peak load, which is the minimum load. So the off-peak load is what? I would write it to be the minimum load and that is equal to what? 0.8 kilowatts or 800 watts and its duration is from 1 to 2 p.m. 
Similarly, the peak load that is the maximum demand. So that is occurring when that is 19.56, which is occurring from 2 to 3 p.m. So we are done with the two parts. Isn't it like this? Yes. Then the second is the total connected load. So the connected load would be what PT or I would write it as CL. So the connected load seems to be. So you will go for the maximum rating you know. Have a look you can see that the maximum for the fans is a 600. So you would say six fans are connected you could say. Then for the lights its maximum is approaching to 300. So just you could assume it that he is using all of the lights at the time. So 300, right? Yes, then he has an air compressor for 7460 watts. Then he has a latte machine for 7460 watts. Then he has a milling machine for 114, 11.2. So 1120 watts. And I believe that should be it. He's got lights, he's got fans, a latte machine, milling machine as an air compressor. So which means you sum them all up. So what do you have is his connected load seems to be, you, you will not go for the exact value over here. So it seems to be 27.02 kilowatts. This is your connected load. Fine. Yes. Then you have the daily energy consumed. So the energy units are what? The energy consumed is the power into time. So have a look. You are given the power durations. You are given the time durations. So, so the power is what? This thing. Time duration is what? 1. Multiply this. This is the energy consumed for 9 to 10. This power multiply with our. This is energy consumed in this particular period. This multiply time is this particular period. We need all of them. So I would just write it over here. Is 8.16 plus 8.16. 6 plus 11.9 plus 15.62 plus 0 0.8 plus 19.56 plus 8.36 so these are the power demands multiplied by the time so you all have to multiply each and every one by a one why because these are one hourly duration so the energy units consumed during the day that this is operating this workshop is operating this comes out to be how much uh, this comes out to be where is it where is it 72.56 kilowatts so these are 72.56 kilowatts is that fine it is the daily energy consumed is done then you have what the an average load so the average load is what average load is P which is the energy units consumed divided by total time T so average load you have to go either on the daily basis weekly basis monthly basis let's say I go for the daily basis so I will divide this by 24 energy units are what 72.56 this comes out to be 6.04 kilowatts 6.04 kilowatts or 6.4 kilowatts I don't know whatever it is just check out the calculations check out the calculations okay Okay, the next is what the, the demand factor. So the demand factor is what it is the maximum demand to the connected load. Demand factor we mentioned by an FD which is the maximum demand to the connected load. So you have a 19.56 divided by 27.02 and this comes out to be 71%. Uh, 71%. And that is it for question number one. You also can have the load factor. The load factor is the is the uh, maximum demand. No. The average load. No. The energy consumed to the maximum demand multiply time. Yes, this is fine. 72.56 divided by 19.56 and multiplied with 24. This comes out to be about 15%. 15% yes. So why is this a low load factor? Because his load is varying and he is operating for a very less period of time in the whole 24 hours. Load factor would be high if he is using a constant load for maximum duration of the time. Is that fine? Yes, it is. Maximum demand is also the ratio of the average load to the maximum demand. Uh, load factor is the average load to the P upon maximum demand. Fine? Yes. This is question number one. Question number two. Let me make the board a little colorful. Question number two with the blue color. What does this state? The annual load duration curve of a power system is a straight line from 50 megawatts to 0 megawatts. So the load duration curve is given which this is time this is the power in megawatts this is a maximum of 50 and this approaches to 0 the time duration is 
on the yearly basis 8760 fine okay the power system is supplied by two stations a is a base load station p is the peak load station so you have what these are supplied let's say by two units so let's say this power this one is supplied by a this one is supplied by b fine now what do you have having the following cost models so the cost models are given let's say cost model for a is given which is 75000 plus 80 into kilowatts and plus then you have what 0 0.02 into kilowatt hours and then the cost model for b cb i will name it as 50000 plus 50 times kilowatts and then 0 0.03 on kilowatt hour basis so this is the tariff or the cost models given then you have what you have to determine the install capacity and how many hours the peak load station should be operated so the cost is minimum so have a look the hours for which this is operating is this much time till here let's say this is x right the base load station the peak load station operating in coordination with the base load station this is x time right yes let's say the installed capacity of the peak load station is y installed capacity of peak load station is what it is y right so the installed capacity of the base load station would be what it would be 50 megawatts minus y and let's say x are the number of hours for which it is operating so you can have it i've already solved it previously in 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 my one of the videos what can you do is i will just show you the procedure over here the procedure is find out the energy unit for b that would be what half x y right yes the energy by a would be what half 50000 multiply 8760 minus minus eb which is half of x y isn't it like this from here you have a relation from here you have a relation in x and y again right yes let me just take this with me okay then what do you have is you can have from the similarities of the triangle have a look y upon 50 is equal to x upon 8760 can i not write x can i not find the value of x from here i can i x are the number of hours right so x is equal to i would just write it in 50000 in kilowatts range divided by 8760 times y i've got the value of x i've got the value of x isn't it like this put this value of x in eb put x in eb and then put value of eb so you will get eb only in terms of y right eb will get only a function of y then what do you have put eb in ea so ea will also then become only a function of y don't put it over here fine just i will write over here is eb now put over here in ea so ea will also become a function of y right so now we have only a function of y ea also and eb also so what do you have is you you have your ea eb you have to put this over here you have the cost models for both the cost models would now be in terms of what ca let's say i am writing so this would be 75000 plus you have 80 in terms of kilowatts so the kilowatts by a are what they are 50000 minus y and then plus 0 0.02 and then 0 0.02 and then the kilowatt hours are what by a so write down those val that value so that would be over here that whatever the value comes out to be write it over here similarly then the cost model for b this write it down now what do you have for the total cost the total cost you have to add the two you have to add ce and cb so if you add them up what does this value come out to be this would again be a value in terms of only y so one variable this would be 850 and 5000 minus 30y plus 8.76 into 10 to the power negative 4y squared have a look you've only got the value of one variable y now you take the derivative of it why because we need the minimum value of y so dc dy and then you equate it to zero have a look you take the derivative you have a y so from here you will have a value of y that comes out to be 17 megawatts something like this you've got the value of y if you have y 
you can find out x from this value you can find out x from this value if you have the value of y which comes out to be 3000 if you have y you have x you can find out eb you can find out ea whatever you want to find out you can find out the capacity factors you can find out the the the, the plant capacity factors and this and that whatever you want to find you've got the whole thing so this was the definition this was about question number two Moving to question number three. Question number three we do with the red color and this is again a simpler one and this is the question that we have just seen in the previous video. So question number three states what you are given. Uh, where is it? Where is the paper? Okay, here it is. The two thermal power stations, one and two servo load center having a demand of 150 megawatts. So power demand is 150 megawatts. Then what do you have? As shown in the company, thermal power station one is remotely located and is have connected to a load center wire transmission line and has a power losses. So power losses with, with uh, are associated with only unit number one and this is the formula. The operational cost models are given F1 is equal to 60 plus 8 P1 plus 0.024 P1 squared. F2 is what? 120 plus 6 P2 plus 0.04 P2 squared. Calculate the optimum power generated by each plant, the incremental cost. So basically P1 is unknown, P2 is unknown, lambda is the incremental cost. A total power loss and the penalty factor so for this you can just go to the previous video the link is given in the description I will just give you an idea over here is that what do you have to find out first you calculate the derivatives df1 with respect to dp1 this will come out as some value then you have what df2 with respect to dp2 some value this would be in terms of p1 this would be in terms of p2 right yes now for a law c system you have to equate it with what you have to equate it to lambda 1 minus dpl with respect to dp1 also find out d power loss with respect to dp1 we for a lossless system directly equated to lambda fine yes now you also have what you have the power requirement over here which is the power demand plus power loss so this would be fulfilled by P1 plus P2. So which means what? That P1 plus P2 is equal to, you have the power loss equation also, 0.002 P1 squared. And you have got the power demand, which is 150. Now you can find out P2 from here. So I would write a minus P1 over here. You've got the value of P2. You've got the value of P2 in terms of P1. You've got the value of P2 in terms of P1. I will write over here. P2 in terms of P1. Put this over here. Put this in B. So B would imply what? B would imply that you've got the value of lambda in terms of P1. You have the value of lambda in terms of P1. Put it, please put it. Then you put this in A. You put the value of lambda in A. So you will get P1 in terms of lambda or lambda in terms of P1, whatever is the case. P2 in B, so this would give you a function of lambda in P1. Yes, yes. So then you go this value of lambda, you put this in A. You put this in A, so you will get the value of P1 in terms of only one variable. And from here, you can find out the value of P1. If you find out the value of P1, from here you put it back, you will find out the value of lambda. You found out the value of lambda, put it back, you will get the value of P2. You've got P1, you've got P2, you, you have power demand, you can find power loss. And then what? What, are, what else is unknown? So penalty factor is unknown. So you can find it by this formula 1 minus 1 over DPL with respect to DP1. This is just the previous video. Just the previous video. Assignment number 3. The first question that we saw this is present in lecture number 3 I believe. Check this out. Yes. And then this one is in video number 19. Question number 2 is present in lecture number 19. I will be giving the links in the description. Okay. Question number four. Question number four states what? So have a look. Two 
अतुल प्लांट हाइड्रोथर्मल सिस्टम हैज़ द फॉलोइंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सो द फर्स्ट वन इज व्हाट इट इज अ थर्मल वन व्हिच इज गिवन 2.7 पी1 प्लस 0.03003 पी1 स्क्वायर्ड एंड द नेक्स्ट इज क्यू2 व्हिच इज गिवन इज 2380 प्लस 60 पी2 एंड दिस इज इन क्यूबिक फीट्स पर सेकंड यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट दिस इनटू मिलियन क्यूबिक फीट पर आवर सो यू मल्टीप्लाई इट विद अ 3600 इनटू 10 टू द पावर नेगेटिव 6 सो देन यू हैव द फाइनल वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू Two. Now, what do you have? Power losses are also given. The transmission losses are given by the power losses are given, which is equal to 1.43 into 10 to the power negative 4 p2 squared for a load demand of 450 megawatts. Where the incremental cost lambda is 3.63. Calculate the optimum power delivered, that is P1, P2. The system power loss is PL, and the water conversion coefficient mu, and the allowable volume discharged. Can you not do it by yourself? Can you not do it by yourself? You can. You can do it. You basically can do it. So let's say I just give you a rough idea. I just give you a rough idea. You can find out dQ2 dP2. This would only be a constant 0.216. You multiply it by this and that. Then you have what? You have dF with respect to dP also. dF with respect to dP. Whatever this value comes out to be, which is 2.7 plus 0.006 p1. Right now the losses are with with P2, so which means P1 you directly equate it to lambda, and lambda is given which is 3.63, so which means from here you can find out the value of P1. So P1 is done. P1 is done. Right? Isn't it like this? It is. Now what do you have? Power demand is given plus power loss. This would be equal to P1 plus P2. So P2 P power loss is in terms of P2 again. You have P1, you have PD. You only variable is P2. From here you can find out P2, which comes out to be whatever is the value, whatever is the value, 539, 539, whatever is the value. So P2 is done. Then power loss you can find out. Power loss you can find out by putting it in the power loss equation. Where is the power loss equation? This one is it. Power loss in power loss equation. You can find out power loss. Now the coordination equation you have mu do q dp is equal to df dp, uh, uh, and this is equal to one minus dp lambda times one minus dpl with respect to dp. So have a look over here. We are given dQ dP has got the losses, so we'll equate this. So we have dQ dP. So mu dQ dP is 0.216, and then you have lambda, which is 3.63, one minus dPl with respect to dP. So what is that? So that would be one minus. So that is in terms of P2, and then you have this with with respect to P2, and you've also got the value of P2. So just put it over here, and from here you can find out the value of mu, which comes out to be 15.43. Right? Yes. This is the value of what? This is the value of mu. Now for the volume required, what do you do is you put the value of Q2 in this one. P2 in the formula of Q2, so you will get the discharge. You get the discharge. You multiply it by the time. The time is given is 14 hours. 14 hours. So Q multiply T would give you the volume, and that is it. That is it. That is it. Last question, please. Last question, please. We'll remove. We'll remove this portion of the board. We'll remove this portion of the board. Now, question number one, I told you, was present in video number three. Question number two is present in video number nineteen. Uh, this is in the previous video, and this question, the question number four, this is present in video number forty-two. This is present in lecture number forty-two. I'll give the links in the description. I will be giving the links in the description. 
question number five the last question for the day last question for the paper what is it a factory has an induction motor rated at 100 kilowatts so induction motor has a rating of 100 kilowatts operating at a power factor of 0 0.7 lagging it is desired to improve the power factor using a synchronous motor so power factor 2 they want it to be 0.9 lagging which rating is synchronous condenser has 50 kilowatts which can also coup additional drive load to calculate the leading power factor with which the synchronous condenser must operate so power factor of synchronous condenser is unknown and also the kvr taken so q of synchronous condenser is also unknown i will just do it a little graphically have a look the induction motor has got what it has got 100 this is let's say p1 p1 is what it is 100 this is operating at a power factor angle some power factor angle it has got some apparent power which is s1 so s1 is basically equal to p1 upon cos of phi1 which is 0.7 you can calculate it now what do you have you have installed a synchronous condenser of 50 kilowatts so which means your p2 has now come out to be 150 kilowatts right and similarly the kvs were also reduced the kvs were also changed to s2 which would be s2 would be 150 by the power factor angle which is 0.9 and the kvrs would also reduce here well q1 was s1 sine of phi1 and q2 is this one which is s2 sine of phi2 so i will just write down the values from somewhere i will just write down the values whatever where is it where is it this one this one this one this one this one but i i believe uh, yes this one so have a look p1 comes out to be how much this one s1 comes out to be 142.85 S2 comes out to be 166.6. Then Q1 is 101.42. 101.42 and Q2 has reduced to 71.66. So both of these are lagging. Both of these are lagging. But from here you can find out what? From here you can find out the KVRs, these leading KVRs that have been injected by the synchronous condenser. So the Q injected by a synchronous condenser are Q1 minus Q2, which is what? Which comes out to be uh, where is it 29.76 kvrs 29.76 kvrs and these are leading kvrs and you can also have done it by the formula qc which is equal to p1 tangent of phi1 minus p2 tangent of phi2 so phi2 phi1 is given p1 is 100 p2 is 150 similarly now you need the power factor of the uh, of the synchronous condenser cause of phi right so which means have a look this one is your 50 this one this one is your 50 right then what do you have this one this one is this thing 29.76 are the kvrs so this is the hypotenuse have a look what can you do cause of phi you need the power factor of this cause of phi curly brown hair so brown hair what do you have a 50 by s so s we do not know so s we need to find out first s curly brown here some people have through proper brushing so tangent of theta through proper 29 29.76 perpendicular by base so you've got the tangent of phi from here you can find out phi from here you can find out phi which is 30.54 30.54 and cos of phi which is the power factor would come out to be 0 0.86 leading and this is the power factor for the synchronous condenser so from here you can also find out your s for the for uh, for the uh, for the synchronous condenser the qva rating so that would be 50 upon 0 0.86 whatever this comes out to be and this question this question i have solved in lecture number 52 lecture number 50 to this question i have solved and that is it that is it about what the power system operation course a very interesting course for me very easy you know quite easy quite easy not difficult very interesting the power factor is very interesting power factor we 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 see we saw the course contents in the very first video we've discussed each and everything in a greater detail we've solved the assignments we've solved the past paper 
you have anything else in your mind you have a question you have any other topic i've missed or you want me to cover the comment section is for you guys you have any feedback about my writing my audio my video quality lightning quality anything the comment section is again for you guys the only thing the favor that you can do to me is just to subscribe to the channel so you have to subscribe to the channel and you know do check out the description as well the links each and every link would be given in the description question number one solved in this video question number two solved in this video i will finish this video over here i will see you very soon inshallah with some new course whatever it may be the feedbacks are welcome in the comment section what course do you want me to start next right yes anyways if you'll be seeing this video till that time i would have started a course but i will just keep your feedback for the next one right yes till the next video wherever we meet uh you know take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel that is it Goodbye.